Today, we will deep dive into the concepts of return on assets and return on equity and explore how these financial metrics can be utilized to assess a company's performance. ROE measures the amount of profit a company generates in relation to its shareholders' equity. It is calculated by dividing the annual net income by the average shareholder equity. On the other hand, return on asset calculates the return on total assets encompassing both debt and equity. To illustrate the application of ROA and ROE in evaluating a company's financial health, let's consider the example of Adani Green Energy. To calculate ROE, we need to first determine the net income for FY 2023 which can be obtained from the profit and loss statement. In this case, the net income amounts to 973 crores. Additionally, we require the average shareholder equity which can be calculated by summing up the share capital and reserves for FY 2022 and FY 2023 and dividing the total by 2. Consequently, the average shareholder equity is computed as 4,959 crore. The ROE for FY 2023 is then determined as 973 divided by 4959, resulting in a healthy figure of 19.62%. However, it is important to note that ROE alone is insufficient for making informed decisions. We also need to assess ROA. To calculate ROA, we need the net income and total assets. For FY 2023, the net income is 973 crore while the total assets amounts to 67,361 crore. Computing the ROA for FY 2023 yields a value of 1.45%. Generally, an ROA of 5% and above is considered good. Let's delve deeper into these numbers. Adani Green Energy has been consistently borrowing long-term debt at a CAGR of 54% over the past 6 years. However, as of FY 2023, the interest coverage ratio remains uncomfortably low at 2, while the total debt to equity ratio remains elevated at 7.5. A review of the year on year trend of debt and interest coverage ratio reveals that these metrics have consistently remained at high levels over the past 6 years. This implies that the company has been generating assets by taking on substantial leverage through long-term borrowing, while the equity has remained unchanged. Consequently, the ROA decreases while the ROE either remains the same or improves significantly. Investors often make the mistake of solely considering the high ROE and concluding that the company is effectively utilizing shareholders' funds. However, they fail to take into account the elevated debt and the very low ROA. Investors need to address critical questions like, will the company be able to sustain high growth in the future, leading to an increase in the interest coverage ratio and reserves? Will the company continue to finance future expansions through aggressive borrowing? often backed by share pledges? Or will the management reinvest profits to fund growth and reduce debt? Will the company be able to maintain profit margins in the future? Does the company deserve a high premium valuation? Acceptable values for ROA, ROE, debt to equity ratio and interest coverage ratio may vary across industries. However, as a general rule, the following guidelines can be followed. An ROA greater than 5% is considered favorable, while an ROA exceeding 20% is regarded as excellent. An ROA less than 5% is considered undesirable. An ROE greater than 15% is deemed good. A debt to equity ratio below 2 is considered favorable, whereas a ratio about 2 is a red flag. Interest coverage ratio greater than 4 is acceptable but less than 2 is undesirable. To understand the ratios used in financial analysis, check out the YouTube shorts.